Hey everyone, Kuran here welcoming you back to Suikoden 5. In the last episode, we started working on Lim's purification rite to get ready for her wedding. We headed to the East Palace first to pay homage to the Dawn Rune that's not there, and we found a mysterious lady in black who was there. We then made our way up here to Luna's to meet Cousin Haswar and Isato, and found a couple of interlopers while they were getting ready for Lim's purification bath. Those interlopers are currently in our entourage right now. They are the father-daughter team of Log and Lun, who are trying to steal gold from them thar rivers, essentially. We were, well, we caught them, rather. And now we're headed down to their hometown of Wrathfleet to execute summary justice on them. Okay, well, their leader's actually gonna execute summary justice on them, but you know what? We're at least gonna come along for the ride. So how do you get to Wrathfleet, pray tell? Just pretty much head south is the gist of it. And go around the East Palace, of course. Uh, you can head down this road if you want. There's not really a whole lot to worry about there. There is this little ditty right here called the Revolving Bridge. We don't need to concern ourselves with it just yet, but we will later on in the story, of course. From there, head a little bit further south, and you get to Rathfleet. So we made pretty much record time getting there, so let's go ahead and head in. Hmm. So this is Rathfleet, eh? They weren't kidding when they called it a floating town. The leader, Raja, is over there in the biggest ship. That would be the Dahak, which we'll find out more about that in a little bit. Well, what are we gonna do? Your mother's gonna be hollering like mad. Don't turn into a sissy on me now, Pop. You're making me feel like crying now, too. That's enough, you two. Let's go. Yes, let's go indeed. And, hi there. No, 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 no. Hey, Maroon. Oh, Lun! Lun, let's play! Let's play! Camp Maroon, kind of busy today. No, too bad. Next time, all right? Okay. No, 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 no. It's rare to see a beaver out and about in these parts. A beaver? A queen's knight who ain't heard of beavers? Who let you in them ranks anyway? I'm still rather new to Felena. Beavers live deep in the southern mountains. They're always working on wood projects. They can be friendly and social, but lately very few of them have been out. Maroon comes here all the time to play. She doesn't like to go to Lord Lake, though. And with that very unsubtle reminder, let's get going. Aw, shucks. Guess we're really going, then. You idiot. This is not the time to give up, Pop. Okay, well, now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's get some treasure, shall we? Because there's a few good pieces of treasure to find in this area of Rathfleet. One of them's up there, we'll get it in a minute. But before that, let's go down here and pick up a Thunder Piece. This, of course, will add up into the Thunder Rune, which is a pretty decent attack rune to have. Not the greatest in the world, but it's still not too bad at all, particularly with your magic users. Now, in order to get the treasure chest on that boat, of course, we have to go through the lobby area first for some strange reason. And we get a fire ceiling piece, which, eh, I never find myself using the fire ceiling runes any. Well, the ceiling runes, I should say. There's more than just fire ceiling. But I never really find myself using the ceiling runes. It's not really that big of a deal. Okay, so, go around here and make our way into the next boat, which is the appraisal shop. Again, we don't have really much to do with that right now, but it'll come in handy later. Then, go through this one, and this is where the fork splits. If you go want to go to the Hawk, you go to the left, 
But we don't want to do that just yet because we want to find our treasure first. I mean, why not? This is an RPG we should explore. Okay, so head over around here to the room shop. Don't really need to do much with the room shop, but just south of it, you got two treasure chests here. One with a sacrificial Jizo, which is always good to have. And secondly, with a story, we have a Mega Medicine, which of course is also good to have. Okay, next up, let's head to the blacksmith shop and head south from here. Go on to the next ship. Head over from there. <laughs> and we find another treasure chest with a silver robe, which unfortunately isn't really great equipment for us to have right now. Uh, well, I say that. We've got better equipment is a better way to put it. But still, it's nice to have, but nothing else to sell. You can also do some blacksmithing here if you want to. I'm not particularly in need of it at the moment, but if you want to do that, be my guest. Head here to the item shop, and nothing really stands out particularly. I do want to go ahead and buy a couple of stacks of smelling salts and cough drops. And do I have eye drops yet? No. Okay, let me get a couple of stacks of those too. Like I said before, it's pretty much your usual status affecting stuff. Not a huge deal to have on you at a, any given moment, but it's a good idea, obviously, to have them in inventory because you can take them out in battle or you can use them after battle to get rid of stuff. So I always like to have a couple of stacks around. Other than that, though, big whoop de doo Talk to this lady here, though. Oh, -ho, your highness, thank you for coming. This here's a little token of goodwill. Here, take it, will ya? We get a fish badge, which is actually a pretty decent accessory. It is magic plus five, I believe. Magic defense plus five, which means... Yeah, George, you're getting it. <laughs> My god, his magic is awful. Okay, as for the rest of it, though, the silver rope, you notice, eh, not that great of an item. Once I finally remember to sell stuff, I will sell them. I may just do so after we get off camera at the end of this episode. Anyway, with that, we've done all our treasure hunting. So we're going to go ahead and head on over toward the Dahak. You've already seen where it splits off, so, you know, this little bit of route is not that big a deal. I will say, though, as I'm getting back to it, I kind of like Raft Fleet. Like Raft Fleet. It's not a particularly aesthetic sort of place, because you notice it's a collection of a whole bunch of boats basically lashed together. But it's still an interesting little place. It's a good headquarters, at least uh, for the folks of Raft Fleet. It's good for them to be able to just kind of go down the Phaetos River and, well, pretty much travel where they will. Alrighty, so we got a save sphere here for reasons we'll find out later. And we have skill trainers! This would be why I was looking at my skills earlier, because I want to know which ones I should look at training for the moment. Now, eventually what you'll want to do as you go through the game is bring all of these offensive, well, the physical stats essentially to rank A at least, because that opens up epic skills once we start getting those. Your physical fighters, obviously, you want to focus on physical stuff. Your magical folks, obviously, you want to focus on magical stuff. But it's good, really, to have both of those in play, or at least be working on them as you go along, just to make sure that you are working on them, I suppose. Just to make sure that you're making some headway. I'm going to go ahead and hold off for now, I think, for the prince. Let's see, Leon. I want to go ahead and increase. I can increase her technique and agility, which are both her equipped skills, so... I'll go ahead and do that. You notice we can only level these up to rank C right now. Later on in the game, we will get items that changes that. George, uh, you have Vitality, so let's go ahead and up that. His other ability you might have noticed is Combat Teacher. That is fixed on him. You cannot remove it. So you can only actually equip one skill for him. That is where your epic skills will especially come in handy because it gives him a stat boost that he could not get otherwise. Now, for Saya Leeds, I'm more concerned about moving her magic stuff than I am her physical stuff. Now, for her, the long throw is fixed. You can't move it. So, I want to level up her magic first, because if I tried to, to move up both, it would dig into our party SP. And I don't really want to do that right now. We don't have enough party SP where I feel good about, about using that to up other people's skills, particularly this early in the game. Head up the stairs here, and out the door. And we find ourselves staring some more treasure in the face. Most notably, the old book one, which is, of course, good to keep on hand, and a flowing piece, which four of those eventually become the flowing rune, which is the upgrade for the water rune. Really, really good. Definitely be on the lookout for that. 
Now that we've done all our treasure hunting and we have found everything that needs to be found, let's go upstairs and meet the leader of Rath Fleet. Admiral, you here? No need to yell, I'm not that old. The royal family tomboy, is it? Tomboy? Raja, is that how you greet your old friends? That was a compliment. And who's the handsome young lad you've got with you? Ah, uh, His Royal Highness the Prince. That cute little kid I knew is this big already? That means this young lady must be Leon, the Queen's Knight's Apprentice. And you must be the famous George Prime, the one His Majesty Farad brought back with him. My, you seem very well informed, Raja. Uh, before I answer the question, and this choice doesn't matter by the way, I really like Raja's voice actress. I think they did a great job with Raja. I like Raja's character anyway. She is... I wouldn't necessarily say one of my favorite characters in the game exactly, but she's really, really good. She, as you might have already kind of noticed a little bit, she basically doesn't give a shit. And that's a lot of fun, especially when it's on your side of the plate. You know so much about us. It's hard to tell now, but this old wo woman was once the commander of the Royal Navy. Oh, I believe it. She looks like she's been through more than a few battles. She helped fight off the RMS Army when they invaded eight years ago. She's a national hero. What? You mean this is the famous Admiral Raja? Well, that was a long time ago. These days, I'm just an old lady trying to live a quiet life on the river. Oh yeah, let me introduce you. This lady is my second in command. How do you do? My name is Kisara. It's very nice to meet you. And for reasons that escape me, she's also the wife of that idiot hiding over there. Ah! Yikes! Looks like these two caused some more trouble, eh? Tell me what they did this time. I see. That's a serious offense, no question about it. Log. Well, dear, you see, uh... Why can't you think just once? Your haphazard schemes get us all into trouble. You gotta forgive me! Lunas is all holy and stuff, so I figured we'd have the loot all to ourselves! You gotta admit, no one else would thunk like a plan like that! Okay, I messed up the reading of it, but my messing up might have actually been a little better. No one else would have thought of it because it's such a terrible idea. I I'm sorry, Mom. I tried to stop him. Bull crap. But then he explained it, and I kind of got excited too. Well, that's too bad. You're old enough now to know better. Yes, Mom. Kisara, you can discipline them as much as you like in the back. You have my permission. Thank you, Admiral. Come with me. You too, Lun. No, discipline, no! Suck it up, Pop. We brought this on ourselves. Well, at least she's got the good sense to just kind of go along with it. Also, it's very clear who wears the pants in that family. Oh, boy. Phew. I'm sorry about all this. And I'm sorry you went through all this trouble just to keep the matter between us. It's all the fault of those two lunkheads. You don't have anything to be sorry about. That's not exactly true. I'm the one who gave the, old, the order to gather gold. Of course, I didn't say they could take gold dust from a holy land. How come you need gold all of a sudden? There's been a lot of demand from the nobles for raw gold. It sent the market price through the roof. The nobles want gold? Must be trying to hire mercenaries. Seems likely. Mercenaries prefer raw gold to gold coins. Now well, makes sense. Because, well, raw gold, you don't have to worry about it being... Ah, uh, defaced. Well, not defaced. You don't have to worry about it being cheapened. You don't have to worry about, say, if you're getting an actual gold coin, 
or if you're getting a copper coin with gold filigree. The Barrows family seems especially desperate. They've been trying to scrape up mercenaries ever since the Sacred Games, by fair means or foul. I don't know what they have in mind, but you don't gather mercenaries for a nice civil chat. No, you do not. But I'm sure Her Majesty the Queen and His Majesty Farad have been aware for this, of this for quite some time. It's not something you guys have to worry about, so chin up! Since you came all this way, you should take a look around Raffleet if you're not in a hurry. Well, he we kind of already did that, actually. It's not the most sophisticated place in the world, but people here are so alive and vibrant, I doubt you'll be bored. I wouldn't mind a look. I think we'll do just that. Alrighty, so we escort our, well, disciplined prisoners out of the party, and we are left essentially to our own devices. Now, before we head back to Solfalena, because, well, yeah, that's what we have left, is heading back to Solfalena. There is one other thing I want to do, and that is... I want to go by the trade shop, essentially. Which was actually right by the entrance, so you could have just gone ahead and ducked in right when we got there. But I chose not to do so, because a couple of things I want to point out before we leave. One, there's a couple of commodities that we should pick up while we're here, because they will sell better over in Solfalena, and of course it's a good time to, you know, get a little profit. Also... There's a character that we get to meet who will eventually be probably one of the most pernicious recruits in the entire game. Incidentally enough, the guy himself isn't really bad at all. It's just trying to get him in the party as a pain in the butt. Meet Cyro. Hello, your highness. Welcome, welcome. Please enjoy your stay here. Me? My name is Cyro. I'm just a retired old man. Not much to my days, but fishing in the occasional game of Blind Man's Bluff. <laughs> yep, we'll be playing with him later. Okay, so... Alright, cool. Let's go ahead and buy all the salts we can, as usual. And then we also want to buy tea and rice if they have it. Oh my god, we don't have enough money. Uh, we got enough money for rice, though. Sort of. Okay, well, I'm broke now. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, yeah, if you have money for tea, buy tea. If you have money for rice, buy rice. And I don't even have mu enough money to check the rumors. <laughs> if you want to do trading as an industry, essentially, it's good to check the rumors every now and then to see what happened. I will go ahead and mention, though, in a previous recording of this, I tried to record this about 10 to 15 times, which is getting on my nerves at this point. But in a previous recording of this, the commodity that I was trying to acquire, salt, was at a very elevated price and I got super salty. Because in order to recruit Cyro, you need to affect and modify the price of salt. And basically what I needed to have done to it had already happened. I was not happy, to say the least. Okay, so effectively, we are done with our events here in Raft Fleet. And I'm actually going to go ahead and close things off here. I know it's a very short recording, but... Next time on Suikoden and 5, we're going to head back to Solfalena and get ready essentially for the engagement party with the Godwins. And, well, needless to say, uh, things are going to happen. So, thank you guys for joining me, and I'll see y'all later.